I played every My Hero Academia game. Here's my thoughts. Something I want to say right off the bat is thank you all so much for the fantastic response to my last few videos. I love reading all your comments and seeing so many people who are super passionate about all these games that I'm playing, with a lot of people telling stories about how they played these games during their childhoods. If I make a video and it makes you feel even a little good or nostalgic, I consider that a win. Also, if you're interested in this kind of content, please consider subscribing. I'm always working on something new and I'm trying to keep stuff coming out for you guys at a reasonable pace. Anyways, let's talk about My Hero Academia. Academia. While there aren't a ton of My Hero Academia games, the franchise is also fairly new. That being said, there are definitely some good games, and you'll see them here. For those who aren't familiar with it, My Hero Academia is a series about a world where most people are born with superpowers called quirks. The main character, Izuku Midoriya, was born quirkless, but inherits the quirk of the world's most powerful hero, All Might. That's the gist of it, and while these games do definitely have some spoilers, for the most part, I'm gonna try my best to avoid spoiling any significant plot stuff too far into this series. It's still a relatively new series, and I don't want anyone to have to worry about not being able to watch this video. So I've decided that my cutoff is going to be roughly how far my wife has gotten into the series, which isn't super far, but enough that I can reasonably show off what these games have to offer without worrying about spoilers. Alright, let's get into the games. My Hero Academia Battle for All was released exclusively in Japan for the Nintendo 3DS in 2016. The game is an arena brawler, which is something I don't think you actually see a lot of on the 3DS. A disclaimer before I start, this game is entirely in Japanese, and I don't know Japanese. Everything I tell you is going to be what I learned from playing, along with using a pretty bare-bones translation guide. That being said, if I miss something or don't catch some kind of nuance in this game, I apologize ahead of time. Visually, this game looks pretty pretty good. It's got the 3D anime aesthetic, obviously, but the UI and visual flair has a manga panel aesthetic, which I love. In fact, pretty much all of the games use this same kind of aesthetic. Every time you start a fight, it begins with a zoom in on a manga panel, which is super cool and reminds me of the Shonen Jump games from the DS. You can run, jump, block, do a standard attack, a strong attack, dash, and dodge. There's also a parry attack if you block and hit the attack button right as an attack connects. Special attacks change if you're jumping, too. You can use a special attack by allowing your special gauge to charge. One attack uses one charge of the gauge. The gauge maxes out at three, which allows you to use your plus ultra attack, which is an ultimate attack that's unique to each character. Something super cool is that if you time it right, you can link up pretty much all of your special attacks into one big combo. In fact, combos in this game feel really good to pull off and are super intuitive. I love it. There's also an option to call in support characters. Each support character has a different effect. Recovery Girl gives you back a little bit of HP, for example. Every time you use a support, there's a cooldown before you can use that support again. You can have up to two support characters equipped per fight. On the bottom screen, there's a little thing you can interact with called Ultimate Time. Every character's bottom screen looks different and is unique to them. Ultimate Time, when activated, increases your character's stats and sometimes gives them a special ability. Midorius has you hold down the button until it's filled and allows him to do a parry move that has an AoE effect that knocks away enemies, for example. The modes in Battle for All are the Story Mode, Free Battle Mode, Wireless Mode, Training Mode, and an unlockable mode called Hero Challenge Mode. Story is obviously the Story Mode. The general gameplay loop is cutscenes followed by story fights. The story mode in this game vaguely covers the story as far as I can tell and goes up to the USJ arc. For those not familiar with the story, that's basically through the first season if you use the anime as a basis. While that's not a ton of story content, this game also came out in 2016 and there really wasn't a whole lot of story content to cover at the time. Unfortunately, this has the side effect in that Shigaraki is the only playable villain. Dialogue and cutscenes in this game are static for the most part, with 3D models representing the characters. Some characters, though, though, specifically those that aren't playable, are represented by 2D artwork instead. It still looks good, though. The dialogue itself isn't voiced, but instead has that thing that games do, where the characters say a couple of words every time they have a dialogue box. There is some nice gameplay variety in the story mode in that not every fight is a straightforward fight. Sometimes there's a gimmick, like a fight where you have to stop Ida from destroying the hidden weapon, or collecting flags faster than the opponent. Completing the story missions earns you the currency, which I'll get to later. Curriculum mode is where you can do challenges that don't progress the story, but give you experience and points. These challenges usually require you to complete certain actions, like nailing a certain combo. Beating a curriculum unlocks the next one. You can also unlock curriculums just from playing through the story mode. Hero support mode in the story mode is where you can increase your character's strength, customize them, and purchase things like costumes. The shop menu mainly has costume items, but something I find to be an odd choice is having every segment of the costume be a different item. If you want Deku's entire hero costume, you've got to shell out multiple times. This means that you spend a weird 
weirdly long amount of time just kind of running around with half a costume, especially since the other characters have their full costumes from the get-go in the story mode. Fortunately, your money earned carries over into other characters' story modes, meaning that you have a head start in unlocking their costumes. There's also extra costume items you can unlock that aren't the standard hero costume, but I found myself struggling to care about them since I wanted to unlock the standard hero costumes first, which sucked up all my spare money. Hero Custom is where you increase your stats. The stats are health, attack, speed, and hero gauge. You gain points to increase the stats as you progress and use your character more and more. Completing the story as Midoriya unlocks all but one character, along with all the other characters' story modes. It also unlocks an entirely new mode called Hero Challenge Mode. Completing any character's story allows you to go back and replay any of their missions. Free Battle Mode is about what it sounds like. It starts out with only two characters unlocked, but playing through the story mode unlocks the rest. Completing the story as Midoriya unlocks everyone but Shigaraki. To unlock Shigaraki, you have to complete all of the curriculums. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that because I couldn't figure out what the mission objectives were because they were all in Japanese. Hero Challenge Mode is the unlockable mode and is just a general arcade mode with three difficulties. You go from fight to fight after selecting your character for a total of eight fights. A fun thing that I think is super creative and true to the story is that while you can technically play as All Might in this game, he's on a timer. Once his timer runs out, you're instantly KO'd and lose the round. It's actually pretty neat and I like seeing details like that. My Hero Academia Battle for All is a fun game. It's one of those kinds of games that was probably made for fans who at the time didn't have a My Hero game. It's not super deep or anything, but it doesn't really have to be. It's a lot of fun and I do wish we got this one in the West when it came out, especially since it seems kind of like a precursor to the One's Justice games. If you're a My Hero Academia fan and you have a way to get your hands on a copy, it's definitely worth giving this a shot. My Hero 1's Justice released for home consoles and PC in 2018. This game, like the last one, is an arena fighter, but on a slightly larger scale. First off, I gotta say, this game's menus are sick. The way everything twists and the camera changes angles is super cool, and when you select a mode, it does this sick zoom in. I guess this is a good segue to talk about the visuals. This game looks pretty darn good. The anime aesthetic is intact and all the characters' hair even moves in the wind. It just looks really clean. Plus, whenever you connect attacks, there's fun comic onomatopoeias that pop up and really polish that manga look the game is going for. For gameplay, this game, as I said, is an arena fight. There's two ways to control your characters, normal mode and manual mode. Normal mode is good for just being able to mash attack and get big fancy flashy combos. Manual mode is a mode where you can more directly control the combos and when the moves come out. I prefer normal mode, but I imagine people who are big into fighting games and the like will probably prefer manual mode. You can move freely around the arena, do the standard punching and kicking attacks, block and do special moves. There's also a dash you can use both on the ground and midair. As you fight, you charge your special gauge which allows you to use different ultra moves depending on how many bars you filled. You also have additional gauges if you have sidekicks equipped. Everyone can have up to two sidekicks, and you can summon them at any time as long as their gauge is charged. There's also a lot of environmental destruction as fights go on. Walls will be destroyed, the ground will break up, and set dressings will get strewn around. Usually though, none of these things actually affect the fight, but sometimes a wall break will open up a new area of the stage. Sometimes, someone will get knocked into a wall, and rather than just falling back down, they'll get stuck in the wall and the camera will rotate and the fight will take place on the wall for a short time. This is a sick aesthetic choice and makes the fights feel way more dynamic and anime-like. The modes in One's Justice are Story Mode, Missions, Local Match, Training, Online Mode, Customized Profile, Customized Character, Gallery, Settings, and Arcade. Story Mode in this game is great. The presentation is a mixture of in-engine cutscenes along with cool manga panel stylized cutscenes. In fact, the chapter selection is broken down into manga panels too. Sometimes even the in-engine cutscenes are in a manga panel. I really enjoy how it's presented and it's much better than just going from cutscene to cutscene with no heart behind it. The N-Engine full motion cutscenes are insanely good too, and definitely had a lot of effort put behind them. The story itself starts with the hero killer arc, which for those who aren't familiar with the source material, is a pretty good ways into the story. In fact, the story in this game starts after the material covered in the 3DS game. It still does cover the story fairly accurately though. It definitely glosses over quite a bit, but you can't really expect a scene for scene retelling in a game like this. 
this. The story is told along chapters on a path and sometimes that path branches. You pick the story chapter you want to play and select a playable character if the chapter isn't just a cutscene. The characters you can choose are limited, however, and sometimes you only have one choice. The branching paths usually cover events that are happening at the same time as the main path to either give you another perspective or give you context. Some of them are even what-if scenarios that have no bearing on the story. Either way, I'm happy they're here and I love seeing meaningful extra content. Completing story chapters unlocks stuff like customization for your profile along with costume items and even more items if you complete certain secret bonus objectives. Oh, and you also unlock the in-game currency. I couldn't find any way in-game to figure out what the bonus objectives were, but there's places online that list them and you can redo the chapters at any time. The missions mode is a mode where you choose from a series of mission sets. Once you've chosen the ones you want to play, you select a team and from there you fight along a predefined path. Completing missions gives your characters EXP along with mission items, including items that recover HP and boost strength. The missions are sometimes just standard fights, but sometimes they're challenges with different variables like a time limit or decreased attack powers. If you win a fight with a character, their HP doesn't recover between missions, forcing you to use items you earn if you want to progress. Local match mode is this game's standard versus mode. There's player versus player and player versus CPU. The match options allow you to change the number of rounds, the time limit, and the strength of the CPU. It's a pretty straightforward mode. Online mode is, well, the online mode. The match options are unranked, ranked, and the ability to create a room. Customized profile allows you to, well, customize your profile. Your profile is the banner that other players see in the online mode. You can unlock these customization options just by playing the game. Customized character is a fun one. This is the mode where you can equip unlocked outfit parts for each character, along with some other customization options. The costumes are neat and include entire costume changes along with customization parts, like glasses and costume pieces from other characters' costumes. And you can purchase different voice packs for every character, but the issue is that all the voices are in Japanese and there's no subtitles to my knowledge in the actual matches. This isn't an issue for those who know Japanese, but for me, this isn't really useful. Gallery mode's got a few good stuff in it. There's demo, which shows you all the cutscenes you've seen in the story mode. Music, which allows you to listen to the tracks in the game if you've completed the story mode. Voices, which lets you listen to voice lines. Model, which allows you to change your selected character's poses. And graphics, which lets you look at artwork and renders you've unlocked throughout playing the game. I like this gallery, but I'm not the biggest fan of the content being locked behind an arbitrary win X battles as Y character. But I can't complain too much. At least it's here. Finally, there's arcade mode, which is at the bottom for some reason. Arcade mode is pretty basic as far as they go. You select a character and then you complete six battles. They did go a little bit further for this one though and added in some fun character specific interactions after fights, which is something I very much enjoy. I do have to add that this game added a couple of DLC characters and DLC episodes, but I won't get too much into DLC for this game since it's mostly the second game that has a bunch of DLC stuff to talk about. My Hero 1's Justice is a pretty darn good game. I had a lot of fun playing it and its story mode is fantastic. However, most of what I can say about this game is also applicable to the second game. Speaking of the second game, my Hero 1's Justice 2 released for consoles and PC in 2018. This game is very similar to the first game, both aesthetically and in the gameplay, but there are some differences. For this game though, I'm mainly going to highlight new stuff or stuff that I noticed was different. There probably will be some changes to mechanics or systems that I don't notice, but these are just my thoughts. For starters, the roster in this game is far larger than the roster in the first game, and that's not even taking DLC into account. The visuals in this game are very similar to the previous game but there's clearly an increase in the quality and volume of effects. The UI was also changed and improved somewhat, but it still functions largely the same. Even the menus are super similar to the first games, which is fine because I really liked the first game's menus. As for the gameplay, well, it's almost identical control-wise. However, it does feel significantly faster. Don't get me wrong, the first game felt responsive, as does this one. It just feels like everyone has quicker moves somehow. Maybe it's just my imagination, but it definitely feels like the pace is a lot higher here. There's also a new ability called a Sidekick Plus Ultra, which allows your sidekick to do a special move at the cost of one bar of your special gauge. The modes in One's Justice 2 are the Story Mode, Mission Mode, Free Battle, Network, Arcade, Training, Customize, Gallery, and Photo Mode. Story Mode looks and works largely the same as the first games and picks up even further into the story. If you care about the story of My Hero Academia, definitely get caught up before you play the Story Mode in this game. The cutscenes are a bit more dynamic than the first games, but still 
have pretty much the same aesthetic. Additionally, there's also now dialogue during fights. This may have been in the first game, but I didn't personally see it, and it shows up right off the bat in this one. The branching paths in the story are back, but this time it's a toggle you can use for the main missions by pressing a button. Mission mode is similar to the first game, but it has a few changes. It's now got a hero agency theme where you're recruiting members to take on the missions one at a time, slowly growing your roster. This one still allows you to choose a path, but this time it's just an overall survival mode with the only available items showing up on a select few paths. Once you've chosen your character, you can select up to two sidekicks from who you've scouted and go on your journey to earn experience and beat the paths. Some are harder than others, of course, and I'd say that overall, the mission mode in this game is way more challenging than the first games. Free battle mode functions pretty much identically to the previous game. However, this time, there is an additional option outside of player versus player and player versus CPU. This option is a four player mode, but unfortunately, I didn't get to try it because I don't have three other people willing to come play this game with me in the middle of the night, which is when I usually record these videos. Arcade mode in this game is a bit more fleshed out. You can choose your character and choose one of three routes. Once you've chosen a route, you can then choose a card to select your battle. Once you choose the card, it reveals who you're fighting. Customization is back, and this time it's broken up a bit differently. The character and player customizations are functionally the same, albeit with some significant UI improvements. However, the shop is now standalone and far easier to navigate, in my opinion. You can also now preview your player card while you change it. Something that I am a fan of, but also am not kind of a fan of at the same time, is how you can purchase extra character-specific voice lines in the shop. I love character-specific dialogue, but I don't love locking it behind a purchase, even if that purchase is using the in-game currency. The gallery is, as is the trend, pretty much the same as the last games. You can watch cutscenes, view images you've unlocked, listen to music, and listen to voice lines. Fortunately, this time around, the music is available from the get-go, whereas in the previous game, you had to complete the story to unlock it in the gallery. The final mode, and a mode entirely new to this game, is the photo mode. Photo mode allows you to choose up to four characters in whatever stage you want. From there, you can do portrait mode or action mode. Portrait mode is a standard portrait-style photo mode where you choose a location on the map and set up a picture and then snap it with all four characters together. After you snap the photo, you can add borders, filters, and stamps to customize it. Action mode allows you to control every character individually and use your attacks to set up scenes. You can pause at any time to freeze a photo, and you can actually get some pretty cool shots doing this. I definitely prefer action mode to the standard photo mode. So this game has a plethora of character DLC. In fact, at the time of this video, there's seven with at least another three on the way. Present Mike, the newest DLC character, came out just recently before I recorded this video. There are two season passes available with the second still being in progress, but it's definitely the easiest way to get all the DLC characters. There's also costume DLC, which unlocks more customization options for your characters, but they're honestly kind of expensive. My Hero 1's Justice 2 is an overall improvement to the first game across the board. It's just incremental improvements though. Everything is similar, just a bit more fleshed out. The only issue I have is that the story starts pretty deep into the series. That being said, if you're caught up or don't care about spoilers, this is definitely the way to go if you want to have cool fights with your favorite characters. My Hero Academia, The Strongest Hero is a mobile game that was released in 2020. This game is a mission-based beat-em-up with gacha mechanics. Visually, this game looks pretty great. It's a mobile game, obviously, but its style is pretty consistent with the previous games, if not a bit simplified. As for gameplay, I'll explain some here and some a bit further on since this game has a few different facets. The main mission gameplay is a standard beat-em-up where you have a selection of moves you can use. There's a standard attack that can link into combos and special attacks that have a cooldown. The special attacks can sometimes be linked into their own combos if you time them right too. You have total freedom of movement in the missions whenever you're in fights, but there's also an auto button that has your characters fight for you, which is standard in modern mobile games like this. The idea behind this game is that you run a hero agency, and the game is built around you leveling up and recruiting for your hero agency. The main hub area, which is a city, allows you complete freedom to roam and explore, but you also have the option to tap the quest button to have your character beeline to the next available mission. You can also use any character that you've unlocked in the hub area too. Sometimes you see other characters running around the hub area though, and it's kind of weird seeing a bunch of Midorias in the same place. Unlocking characters is standard gacha fare. You have a chance at either unlocking the character or puzzle pieces which can eventually be traded in for that character. Every character you have can be trained in the hub area using items you earn by playing the game or by using those puzzle pieces. Using these items, which are usually food, allows you to increase your character's levels. Of course, you can also increase their levels just by completing missions with them. There is a level cap though, and you do have to use items to increase that cap. Leveling up characters increases their stats across the board, including 
including speed, attack, defense, and HP. You're also able to equip them with enhanceable hero gear, which further increases their stats. The gear seems to apply equally to all of your heroes, though, and it's more like equipping the gear to yourself. Missions are usually given by an NPC in the hub area, and when you embark on a mission, you're able to choose your party from the characters that you've unlocked. Missions take place on open maps that are pretty big for this kind of game. You run from area to area, beating up enemies and picking up items. After you defeat a wave of enemies, another wave pops up in your map and you move on. Sometimes the missions end with a boss fight, which is just a powered up, sometimes stronger enemy. Sometimes there are also extra mission objectives like rescuing kidnapped civilians or protecting a certain NPC. There's also extra rewards for completing some extra parameters like finishing the missions under a certain time limit or not taking more than X number of hits. Of course, there's also some ground level missions in the hub area like picking up trash, real life hero stuff. Completing missions gives your hero agency experience and leveling up your agency unlocks more features and stuff to do. Additionally, you receive currency and food items you can use to boost your character's stats. Additionally, there are other types of missions that you can access from the menus, including supply challenges, which mainly seem to exist to farm items and stuff like food. There's also this kind of faux multiplayer mode where you can take on other players' teams, though these are just CPU battles. The battles themselves actually play themselves and are more like a whose stats are better kind of thing rather than the standard gameplay. Cutscenes in this game are largely unvoiced dialogue boxes with characters just kind of standing around, but sometimes, pretty much at the beginning of the game, there is the odd fully voiced cinematic scene, complete with the English dub. For the most part though, it's mainly just text boxes. So there's probably a lot in this game that I haven't covered, but unfortunately, this is the kind of game that demands a significant amount of time, over the course of weeks or months, to unlock more content and characters. That being said, foundationally, this is a pretty fun game, and barring some crazy change to the gameplay loop further in, I can definitely recommend this as a casual bit of fun if you're a fan of My Hero Academia. If you're not though, I don't know if this game does anything especially unique enough to draw you in. Overall though, I'd recommend giving it a shot since it's free and you've really got nothing to lose but time. My Hero Academia Ultra Impact is another mobile game that was released exclusively in Japan in 2021. This is another game that's entirely in Japanese. I can't say for sure that it won't be released in the West, but at the time of me making this video, it hasn't been released in the West yet. That being said, my ability to explain things in this game is going to be pretty limited, so there will likely be inaccuracies or stuff that I just miss. I will still give you my overall impressions from what I played though. The game is a turn-based RPG gacha type game where you have a party of three characters. The visual style is very much chibi characters, but the menus and overall look of this game is actually super clean. I kinda like it. You build your party from your available characters along with two substitute characters. From there, you embark on missions. During fights, you don't directly control your characters, instead commencing the turn and having every character attack individually. You have a choice of doing a standard attack or a special attack. Special attacks can also be chained together to pull off a coordinated attack. These have little timing minigames where you have to tap the screen at the right time to maximize damage. Really, this is about as deep as I can go into the gameplay because if there is more to it, I couldn't understand it thanks to the language barrier. There is a story here and it's told through dialogue boxes with somewhat dynamic character artwork. Sometimes there will be a cutaway showing manga panel exposition too. Of course, I didn't understand any of it, but I had a general idea of what was going on since I'm familiar with the source material. There is, of course, gacha pools you can do, though I have to say that I do like the little cutscene that plays for the pools. It's Bakugo and Midoriya trading blows, which doesn't make any sense for why the characters show up, but it is still a neat aesthetic. It also looks like their costumes decide the rarity of what you'll get, but I can't really confirm or deny that because I only did a couple of pulls with the free currency that the game gave me at the beginning. And that's all I can really say about this game. I want to say it's pretty surface level, but there could be some huge intricacies that I'm totally missing. Hopefully someday they'll release it in the West and I can give it another shot. And that's it. There was one additional mobile game called My Hero Academia Smash Tap, but unfortunately the game was completely shut down and there's no way to currently play it. Looking at all the games I played, I think the One's Justice games are obviously the complete package if you want to enjoy the story through the games. However, if you're just looking for some fun quirk fighting, go with One's Justice 2. There will no doubt be more My Hero Academia games in the future, but for now, the ones we've got are pretty good. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. Let me know what kind of stuff you want to see me play in the future down in the comments. I've got tons of suggestions in my backlog now, but I'm always willing to hear more. As always, thank you, and have a fantastic day.